Beloved, it's time to gather around the Lord's table this morning. Please open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 27. We look at a few verses here in verse 45, remembering our beloved Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Beginning in verse 45, Matthew in 27 says, Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness all over the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabbatani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood there, when they heard that, said, This man's calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, Let him alone and let us see if Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. And so when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. Paul reminds us of the significance of the Lord's Supper, Having received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For often as you drink this bread, or pardon me, as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. Let's give thanks for the bread. Our loving Father, we do thank you again that we have been reconciled to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the person and the work of your beloved Son in whom you are well pleased, who is our Passover Lamb. We humbly come before you, trembling, but with hearts full of gratitude, full of thankfulness that we can be now called sons and daughters by the blood of Christ of the Most High God. Father, we pray your blessing on the bread as we break it this morning and remember again the giving of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, who was broken upon the tree, and yet in fulfillment of Scripture, not one bone was broken in his body, but breathed his last, dismissed his spirit, and returned to glory. Father, we thank you for it. We ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved family, let's eat together. As we remember the giving of God's Son on the cross, the prophet Isaiah, centuries before the birth of Christ, wrote in Isaiah 53 verses that are precious to us. Who has believed our report? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form of comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed." All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before its shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? 
For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death. Because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Our loving Father, we thank you again humbly as we take the cup this morning that pictures the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ shed at Calvary for us, that you would reconcile us, that you would buy us back, ransom us back from a dead, decaying, dying world, and not only that, but our own dead, deceitful, wicked, black hearts, that you would transform us through the work of your spirit, that you would draw us to your beloved son. And we remember this morning, again, with a focus upon him as he gave his life for us as a ransom to buy us back and to give us life eternal, life everlasting, and life abundantly today. We give you thanks for the cup and ask you to bless it. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's drink together, beloved. And so, Father, again we return thanks. These brief but precious moments in which we remember our great salvation in Christ. We thank you again that we have riches stored in heaven, in the heavenly places, because of the work of Jesus. We thank you that we have eternal life in him, and even now are seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We thank you for the grace that we enjoy in Christ. We thank you that you are the author and finisher of our faith. Lord Jesus, we thank you. In the name of Christ, amen.